All right, the day has finally came. Today is the day we're gonna drop our brand new merch. Head over to the website, RobbieLayton.com. Get yourself the brand new shirt. Look at that, look how awesome. Look at that, look how good it looks. Oh. It really contours perfectly. And while you're there, we need your help, okay? We're naming the Jeep. Dory the Explorer. -y. If you don't choose Dory the Explorer, Adley will be so mad. Or the more logical name, Deja Blue. I have no preference. It's up to you. Here's the deal. For the next three days, we're gonna be at the off-road games down in Hurricane, Utah. You're gonna be there too. So you're gonna be able to pick up a sticker in person. Now, whichever one we sell the most of, that's what we're naming it. You also might wonder what this cute little machine behind me is. This is a CF Moto 950 Sport Z Force. Brand new, has four miles on it. We're gonna be hauling this to the off-road games because one of you are gonna be taking it home with you. That's right, you're gonna have to rent a truck and trailer to haul it home, but that's okay because you're gonna get it for free. No, no purchase necessary to enter. But if you want an extra, here's the cool thing. You can get an extra entry for any merch purchase at our booth. You're gonna be getting an extra ticket into the drawing that we're gonna be doing on Saturday. That is March 16th. We are going to be giving away the CF Moto at our booth, at the off-road games, must be present to win. You don't wanna miss out on this once in 2024 opportunity. So be there or be square. Click that link in the description, get yourself some merch. Now I do wanna give you a disclaimer. We have taken all of our merch out of inventory. So when you go to the website, it's gonna say it's out of stock. You're still gonna be able to buy it next Monday. All of that merch is gonna be put back into inventory. Now, if we sell out this weekend, which we hope we do, we have another order coming. So don't worry. We're gonna be shipping your orders within one to two weeks after the off-road games. So no worries, have a little bit of patience. You guys are gonna get your awesome new merch. So tomorrow, March 14th, the off-road games are gonna start. And I can't wait to see you guys there. So come hang out with us, come say hi, and let's go have a fun time. Now, let's get to the video. All right, so what we have behind us is a 2002 Ford E450 two-wheel drive dually bus. We're gonna be turning this bus into the ultimate four-wheel drive off-road overlanding bus for Onyx Off-Road. They're gonna be taking this bus around to their events, to different get-togethers, all sorts of functions, and they're gonna be able to sleep in this thing if they want. They're gonna be able to go off-road if they want. They're gonna be able to give ice cream out the side of it if they want with a flip-out window. They're gonna have solar panels on the roof, four-wheel drive. So by the end of this build, we're gonna have this bus sitting on 38-inch Milestar Patagonias. We're gonna have method wheels. It's just gonna be awesome. If you wanna take your cat off-road, you're gonna be able to in the bus. Beast your eyes on the newest members of our crew. Axel support carts. That's what we're gonna call them? Axle holders. Yeah, axle holders. We're getting. I like axle support carts. Axle right? support carts. Emotional support system for axles for putting gears in. So this is gonna be the first of a bunch of videos of building out. <laughs> Why is he ducking? This is gonna, I don't know why he ducked. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, this is gonna be the first of a bunch of videos building out the Onyx Off-Road bus. So thank you Onyx Off-Road for sponsoring all of this and building a cool bus that you get to take around to all your cool events. So we're gonna have our buddy Bleep and Colt here tomorrow. He's actually not gonna be called Bleep and Colt anymore. He's gonna be called Colt Builds It. We'll talk more about that later. I'm super excited for Colt. He's actually branching off and starting his own channel. But today, we are creating... What did I call it? Axel support, support cart. Axel support cart. See, that's why we keep her. That's why she's here. Because she remembers things. She remembers what I say. And she puts it in a Rolodex and literally like 10 and a half years later, she'll pull that Rolodex out and she'll remind me what I said. Colton's welding for the first time in the history of his life. Hillbilly already built this one off camera because he doesn't wait. I'm gonna go and CNC out some brackets that actually hold the axle shafts. I'm gonna design that up, cut them, we're gonna weld them on and make sure that the axle will sit on here. Hillbilly's gonna be building a support for the pinion and life's gonna go on. So here are our axles in all of their stock glory. And Bleep and Colt's gonna come and help us do the gears in them. We're gonna be stripping them down, getting them ready because these axles are gonna go in that bus. Over there, so what I wanna do is I wanna figure out this axle tube size, like three and three quarter. So I'm gonna do a four inch, I think I'm gonna do a four inch opening. I think if I do a four inch opening, oh, I about got lightheaded. That'll cup the, cup the axle. Maybe we'll go four and a half. Just that way if we line it with anything or whatever. Yeah, four and a half it is. So, you know, it's my first time welding. So I went to tack it, it broke off. So I'm just gonna try and grind my tacks down because it's kind of messing with my plumbness. 
<laughs> right, what did you do? Ah! What'd you do? Burn the hole through it. <laughs> hey, look. And then you like weld on the side, you can well, weld splat. I'm trying to practice my angle. Look at that. Don't look, I don't know if that one's good or not. Don't show that, that one. I got a hole, hole there too. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna put a brace here and here, there to there. Just mock hillbillies, the one he did. Won't look as pretty, I mean, I'm trying, but this is fun. Well, you gotta take a break. All right, what do you gotta do? We have to run to Hermanson's Hardware. Gotta get a piece of pipe that this way they're sliding without a lot of slop, because that's all we have is half inch slop, or find two pieces that do slide in. If we can't find one that will slide in this or over this. So while you finish your hole up, I'll hurry and pull a caster off and then- Billy, totally. what? I have a freaking awesome idea. What? Come here. So we want it to be adjustable. Yeah. <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? You think what I'm thinking, boy? Chuck a ball thread, weld the nut on the top. Definitely not. What, weld that to this? No, cut it off, hold that. Cut it off, cut the top off, and then weld it to something that we might have to go bigger. But then this is this is our adjustment. Look, that'll hold the pinion. There you go. All right, so never mind. That just came to me in a in a dream. We still have to go to. <laughs> we have no casters for the second car. All right, I've got this all programmed up. We're gonna cut this out. See if my idea will work. <laughs> So I got these off the plasma table and I just wanted to clean them up a little bit. So I threw my Scotch-Brite belt on the Marabraid and I've just barely Scotch-Brited all this. It was so good. I didn't want to remove it. I just wanted to polish it. This is what it looks like hot off the press. This is what it looks like with a little Scotch-Brite. So I'm going to finish up all four of these and then I'll show you guys where they're going to go. All right, so I've got these all cleaned up. Check this out. This is what I'm going for. I'm going to weld, I'm going to weld these on each side. And that is going to hold the axles. So I think I'm going to move this to the edge. That way I can weld it. So I'm going to grab some magnets. I'll magnetize it. And then we'll build a little plate that goes on the back side right here. Caps that in and keeps it. We got the hooks and plates. I don't know that I need to cap that. All this is is to hold the axle and be able to move it so we can work on it and put gears in it. So the goal is to get both of these built get them ready, get the axles on them, and then we got to take and strip them down. Now, Hillbilly had a good point. We do need a place for a drain pan right here. So I think we're going to build a drain pan support. So it'll just be a piece of metal that we can put a drain pan on and allow for the fluid to flow out into the drain pan. And then it's removable. So there you have it. One almost expertly finished. All right, I'm going to hurry and plasma these the Harbor Freight jack stands. And you can probably hear my head is all screwed up today because we did a recovery and I walked three miles in the cold and my head screwed up. I'll get the other one cut off. We'll take it over to the belt sander and we'll grind it all up to where we can put this on our metal. Well, I got my metal brace going in between the two upright bars just sitting in place and I'm just trying to do some figuring on if I want it centered or up higher probably just copy what hillbilly did just go center of it and then I'll do my angle braces I am measuring this out because I am going to install this then I'm going to drill some a pinhole this is going to be our pinion holder and I want to be able to take this off but I also want it to be stable this is going to weld the hair and then I'm going to put a bolt through it. That way it stays pinned. I'm going to do the same to the top. All right, so I put, I put a bolt in. Now I'm going to drill my other hole. I'm just going to put two. We're not using lock bolts or lock nuts. That way we can just pull it off. We can actually go get a pin system and pin it. But right now we've got bolts. Did we even explain why we're building these? I don't think so. We're putting all that Yukon gear and axle stuff behind you into these axles for our bus build for Onyx. And I'm cleaning all the gunk and stuff out of this catch pan. All right, so we're just about done with this part. I'm just welding a couple underside seams. We're gonna put the casters, the other support, 
the upright, the holder majig, the doodads, the dillies, and then we'll have it done. Okay, don't look at that part. I'm not looking, don't worry. I know you're new. You don't know what to do. Holton's vanilla, baby. All right, I've got the other hook on. I'm gonna weld this one up. Holton's making two braces. Hillbilly's making some clamp inserts. We're really cruising today. Okay, so we have built a contraption that will now hold, not go anywhere, but you can move it wherever you need. So, as you can see, catch pan has clips on the side. You're not going to bump it. It's not going to get full of oil and splash because it's being held with these little keepers. Okay. So we've got this one done. I've just got to do that one, and then it's time to put the axles on here and get our pinion supports in the right spot. So this one's going to be the rear axle because we centered it. Hillbilly brought it to my attention, which I should have been thinking about it, but I wasn't. The front axle has the pinion offset, so we can't put this keeper in the center. So what we'll probably end up doing is doing a tube position so that we can put a front or a rear on each stand. All right, we got our catch can holders welded. Time to put our axle on. Bombie, you're going to have to move, sweetie. Bombie's hanging out. Oh, kitty, kitty. This is going to make life a lot easier. So look at that. Should be solid. This can be moved to the front end. Take it off if it's in your way. So Hillbilly just let me know this one's narrower than the rear. So we're not going to be able to use this either or. It's going to be specific. So this one's going to be our front. So you're going to lift that up and we're going to try to install this. We're going to take some finagling down a little. Hold it. We got one on. The nice thing about this, we should be able to unbolt everything with it on the stand. Like I said, we're gonna come and build the upright support offset. Now let's load the back. Up. All right, so we've got this upside down. So he's gonna lift it. We're gonna put this e-brake cable through and then we're gonna spin it. We gotta rotate it. This is the bottom, that's the top. There we go, now spin. Okay. And now, it's almost perfectly balanced. Yeah, but when we're messing with it, we mm -hmm. look at that. That's actually going to be so perfect. It's going to put the pinion support here, and then we can go like this to help. Yep, and then we it. could even we could even do some sort of a, like a ra oh, we could do ratchet strap. That's what we could do. Mm -hmm. Do ratchet straps, go up, hooks go. on both sides, so we can ratchet strap it tight. Yeah. Hey, Bombi. In a minute, huh? Oh. Oh, Alright, yeah, what I'm doing right now is I'm clocking this to the middle. What's kind of cool about these that you may not know, but jack stands have a lockout on them for safety. So you can throw that lockout pin in there and it can't go down past it. That is going to be our middle ground here. So that's where we're going to cut this tube off. We're going to weld this. So we'll go throw that in the chop saw. We'll cut it off. Weld this to that. Weld that to that. We'll have that done. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to put some form of a hook off the side of here. And we're going to use a ratchet strap just to stabilize things. And I think it's going to work out perfect. Okay, I'm going to cut this down for Robbie. Give me a mark. Got my handy dandy chop saw grinder. Now we'll take it over to the new bandsaw grinder. It's not a bandsaw. Not bandsaw. Uh, Marabray. What's it called? Belt grinder. Belt grinder. You got it. So this is how this works. This is where it sits. Level. Mm -hmm. Now if we want to go up higher, boom. We can drain the oil, drop it all the way down, and we can pin that down, work on it. There you have it, folks. There's my weird idea. I'm gonna move on to the other one. We're gonna let it kind of cool down for a minute, but as you can see, we've got the top all welded, all four sides, the bottom foot welded on, and it is ready to do its job 
for its next life. Okay. Negative! There's our pinion support. You know what I think we should do? Hmm. Let's just put some chain link, chain hook right here and right here, and let's just go get some dedicated ratchet straps, and we'll take a ratchet strap that's down to the corners. We got chain. So Billy says we have chain and we have ratchet strap. So we're gonna get this puppy done. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put little chain holders for the ratchet strap. All right, this one is officially done. So we've got our ratchet strap, we've got our push. So this stays there, holds pressure. Okay, so you can move this around if need be. Your axle's not going anywhere. So after we welded this, the whole plate warped. I'm trying to beat it a little bit. It might just have to be what it is. We did one out of 3 sixteenths and one out of quarter, and the one out of quarter inch is not like this. You ready? Yeah. Oh, whoa. That moved. That worked. Whoa. That, that worked. Okay. Hey, we're just going to call it a day. I hope that we didn't pinch this too tight. Oh, that's so messed up. That's not even good. <laughs> whoa. Let's just leave it. I'll hold it right there. It's so messed up. It's just messing. It's just messing it. Run this side through the English Who wheel cares? and this side the English wheel. Who cares? It just has to hold the pan. It'll hold the pan. Straighter what it was. All right, so we had to take a second. We had to come and measure the window because we got to put a ice cream window in. If we land the bottom edge of the window right there. Thirty three is going to be there. That'll work. Now we got thirty three tall, and then we can go either fifty three wide. We better go fifty three wide. Okay. We got our window measured out, and we're putting an ice cream window in this bus. All right, so it is the next day. Yeah! And Colt, <laughs> is it Colt builds it? Yeah. And Colt builds it is here. You guys have seen our buddy Colt many, many times on the channel. He's got himself a new channel. So he is here helping us out, getting these gears all set up, getting the axles for the Onyx bus done. And I'm glad he showed up because I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that happened last time to us too, didn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> there isn't room for three of us, but I've got to go to Salt Lake and pick some people up. So you guys won't even notice I'm gone. You obviously don't want to learn how to do gears because you're always gone when we're doing them. <laughs> I'll be here for the gears. These racks look pretty neat. So Yeah, it took us um, 24 man hours to build them. <laughs> now that you got it figured out, I'll just have you look. build me a set. Check this out. You'll like this. Oh, oh yeah. That That's move. Your job, driver Check job. this out. Check this out. Oh, you need to go up? No problem. Fully adjustable. Yeah. Be impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> and then this moves. That's why it took so long. Because we can't just do it. Okay, we went and got everything pulled out of the bus that we need to rebuild these axles. I'm not a professional. I have all DeWalt stuff. I'm like the regular dude. Yeah. <laughs> just rip it. We don't need that sensor, do we? I don't know. Does ABS? the bus have them? No. You sure? It's on the rear axle. It's a plug that goes right here on the rear axle. Okay. Much easier. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Can you get that out? No. Okay. I think it's welded on there. Oh, that's why you had it so good, huh? So first thing we gotta do here is strip this axle apart and see what we're looking at. It looks like the brakes are locked up, but at least the pinion's free and I can see the axle shaft moving, so I know that everything in here is still good. Is this a vacuum lock? Yep, Va vacuum uh, oh, auto, auto hubs, yeah. That's one of the bye bye. You don't want your vacuum auto hubs? No. Oh, this stuff. <laughs> stuff? <laughs> that won't make the cut. <laughs> There we go. Oh, hey, it turns. <laughs> so just like any axle build or any build in general, we probably want some new brake calipers. <laughs> right, those are good. <laughs> they may or may not be totally locked up. Only one way to find out. Put them back on and try it. Modifying the hard line just a little bit. I had to on the Bronx Star. Yeah. Oh, that one's a lot stiffer than that other one was. Yep. Yep, definitely breaks. It turns again. 
So I ask Hillbilly for Torx, and he gives me like this Keebler Elf thing. I mean, look at that. <laughs> like, like, this is why I can't work on small stuff. My hands are too fat for it. <laughs> I'm gonna break this. Oh yeah, I'm it's already broke too. I think it just did. It was popping. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> look, see. You broke it already. The teeth are, the you've teeth not even been here for an hour, and you've already broke tools. When you were making cookies with this, you probably stripped some of the threads out. <laughs> In a tree. <laughs> Give a little tap, 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 a -roo. Oh, man. That thing was stuck in there. Look at all the rust on that. At least the inside's nice and greased up, though. So, that's a plus. Since Colton's still in the whole axle on doing everything, before he can get to the steering, I won't hurry and do it so I can do something on it. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna start by pulling this front dip cover off to get the fluid draining. Okay, I got all the bolts out, except that one. Because if you pull them all the way out and that you get the dip cover to pop free, fluid goes everywhere. You leave the one bolt in there so you can just kind of hinge it on that one bolt and you can control the fluid flow a lot better. For any of you that's ever messed with gear oil, you know that it does not come off your hands very well and it stinks. Whoa! And I still managed to make a mess. <laughs> so now I gotta get that cleaned up. Okay, we got one side already all popped out, the axle shaft and hub assembly. So now we're doing the other side. Oh no, what'd we hit? We're good. Oh yeah. That one's seen some weather too. Yeah, that U-joint's pretty rough. So with your bearing caps inside your housing, you always want to take them off and put them on on the exact same side in the exact same direction that they were to start with. Uh, in this case, we have a letter K that they've stamped in here that's vertical and vertical here, and then it's horizontal this way on this side. But if you don't have that, then you wanna go ahead and just hit a punch and double punch one side on the high side and a single punch on the other, because you always wanna put it back the way it is because that's the way it's machined. What happens if you don't put it back the way it is? Uh, if you don't put it back the way it is, then you're putting an incorrectly machined cap on that axle. So if you do that, it's not the end of the world, it's just not a good practice. Will the bearing get chewed up or anything? Uh, it could. It could put the wrong amount of pressure on one side of the bearing as opposed to being machined for it. There we go. Now you just don't want to lose your uh, bearing caps. Ugh. So we're gonna go with the Yukon Grizzly Locker, Yukon gear and axles. And the first thing you wanna do is all this stuff comes kinda coated. So you wanna take a little brake clean and clean everything off before you put anything together. And that's gonna make sure you have a good contact point when you have it all tightened down. Trick of the day, spray brake clean on your rag and it's gonna last a lot longer than just spraying it on whatever you're using. Throw a little cherry juice on here for good measure. Always throw the cherry juice on your ring gear bolts. So at this point, you just wanna snug them up and then we will torque them down. One of my favorite things about Yukon gear and axle is every time you get a set of gears, they give you one of these, which I consider the gear Bible. It's just a seven page, how to do your gears, how to set them up. This is probably one of the best books on the market. And if you can't re just read seven pages, then you probably don't wanna ever do gears. But it also comes with every single torque spec that you can have for every axle that they have gears for so that you know what exactly you need to torque your ring gear to, your pinion to, all your stuff, your caps and everything. It really comes in handy. So nice. Might have to modify my Harbor Freight one with an air jack. Catch it. <clears throat> I'm really good at putting catch. Okay, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Catch it! What do you think I did? <laughs> Gotta get that one still. Gonna hurt. Oh, you just dropped the baby, bro. All right, <laughs> now that Colt has everything out of this, I'm gonna get all the oil out and start cleaning it, and then we can get rid of the stinky drain pan and put it outside. The entire shop stinks it's like gear oil. It smells like poopy. Like poopy doopy. She actually, my wife actually thought it was like a a dog or something came in here. <laughs> so hopefully we don't need this paint can lid because I destroyed it getting it out. Oh, dude, we need that. We'll go get another paint can lid. 
That's all we got. It'll be okay. Okay, okay good. <laughs> all right, then the sills are out. I'll get this all cleaned up. Colt's beating the inner rate for the pinion into the housing and on the back side of it, he's got the oil catch. And it's just basically a big metal washer that keeps the oil in here and keeps the bearings for the pinion lubricated. Otherwise they burn up and burn down. And then you turn your gears into a spool. And sometimes when you don't have that oil thing the right way. When it's upside down and you run it on the backside of the gears. Your snowcat just quits driving. What? <laughs> Love you, Matt. Read the future. That's what you get for not calling yeah! the gear guy. That's what you get for not calling the gear guy. <laughs> All right, so Colt's gonna grab the Grizzly locker from Yukon Gear and Axle and put it in the housing and see if the gears will gear. <laughs> That's what he said. Gotta know if the gears will gear. All right. Big swing's coming in. You're not joking. You've done this a few times, haven't you? Wow, you're so strong. That's almost perfect. You're a liar. That feels almost perfect. Liar. He's a liar. He's a lion. He's a lion. Feels almost perfect. Now, if you remember. Not perfect. It's too tight. I don't what? like it. I don't have a crush sleeve. I don't love it. I don't love it. You're on the wrong part of the job, bro. I'm learning. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> we're at a point wow. where we're going to temporarily put these caps back on, and then we're going to check backlash. We got good backlash, then we'll check the pattern. And you won't see it. They'll see it. They won't see it up close, because then you can zoom in and judge us. <laughs> and we don't like judgy people. I'm judgy. It's okay. Judge me. Just want to point out the fact that Colt's not perfect. He did not get it the first try. No, no. In fact, if you get it the first try, you've still had it in and out three times. But we just used the old shim sizes to see if it would fit. Obviously, at least our bearing pressure on the sides is all good, but uh, we have zero backlash. So we got to take it back out and do it again. Zero. So how do you know which way to take it? Oh, I mean, so, I know you know how, but like, yeah. so tell it to this, an idiot, kay. such as myself. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and we have to move the ring gear away from the pinion. Oh, so we're so gonna pull shims out of this side and, add shims, and add shims over to this side. We know that the bearing preload though is a, just perfect. Like it took just enough pressure to get it in. So we just have to move a shim over. We don't have to take anything out and take it away forever. Just move one side to the other. That makes sense? Picasso, okay. I like it. So I don't know if that backlash is good or bad, but Colt told me that it's close enough that we can check the pattern. So this is the second time we put it in. We pulled it out. We changed 30 thousandths of a shim out of here, put it here. That actually moved everything 60 thousandths. So we've got a little bit of backlash. So we're going to check the pattern, see if it's right. If we got lucky, then we do the crush sleeve and we go home for the night. Just kidding. We don't really. That was a joke. But then we can move on to the rear axle. So what we got to do here is we got to paint a happy gear. All right, now we need a drill that I can put on this. What we're doing right now, we're not shimming it left and right. What we're doing is looking at the pattern for the pinion depth to get the get so the, the pinion has so, to go that way. So the pinion has to go in deeper. But yeah, so this is this is going to be the drive side of this gear. So we want this to be centered up in this tooth. So the pinion has to come in deeper to get the center of this tooth. That's why I wasn't too worried about the backlash being perfect because I figured that I'd probably have to push this pinion in more. So how do you push it, it in? So we'll take it back out. You gotta take that back out and you take your pinion back out. Then when you press off your pinion bearing on, that's pressed on the oh, front whoa, whoa, okay, and then okay. you shim it and it'll push the pinion in farther. Okay, so do you have an idea of how much deeper you wanna go? So the coast side is also shallow i would say we want to probably go in i'm gonna guess i'm gonna shoot for twenty thousands. all right perfect and all right so we've got the we've taken the carrier out three or four times we've pulled the pinion apart we've ruined a bearing we put a new bearing on it we have the depth correct we have our pattern where we want it now all we have to do is take it apart again we've got to check our backlash we've got to put our pinion seal in we've got to put our axle seals in we've got to do our crush sleeve our new yoke nut I mean, there's, there's still so much to do, but the pattern's done. So I was in class today and Colt from Colt Builds It let me know that on a Dana 60, you want six to 10 thousandths backlash. 
And can you take a guess on how much backlash we have? It's seven. It's seven thousands. That's how much. Do you know what that means? That means it's perfect. You are amazing. Perfecto. <laughs> I feel like I could do the next set after Colt does the next set. <laughs> and the next set after that. <laughs> All right. Pinion seal is in. I've got the bearing. We've got the washer. Now we're going to put the crush sleeve in. We're going to put the pinion back in. And Colt is going to expertly crush the sleeve. Now, so me and Colt got the carrier back in and we got the caps torqued to 80 foot pounds and we are done. So I'm going to put the Yukon cover on it. I'm going to let Hillbilly finish building the axle shafts and we're going to move on to the rear axle. <laughs> Thank you.